folks, good morning. On behalf of my dear Miriam wife and myself and our three wonderful daughters, it's good to be here this morning. As a matter of fact, wherever God's presence is, I want to be there. And I want to just open my soul this morning to speak to you from my heart. Okay? You see, I, I function on a re the reality that this time we have, Brother George, is short. And that's not just a cliche. Sometimes you feel as though you're functioning on borrowed time. And when I have given an opportunity, Sister Yudin, I don't want to miss that opportunity. When I have one of my Mint's boss is here with me, um, the Reverend John Lewis, and his dear wife, Dr. Lewis herself. We give God thanks for these dear people. And I see someone sitting next to you. Might that be Romaine? Sister Romaine? Bless my eyesight. Thank you, Jesus. I still can. Hallelujah. Wait, let me read myself. <laughs> I'm not fair, Brother Adrian. My wife will keep me in check to tell me, go ahead and preach. <laughs> you see, what Tena is only one life I have. And when I lie horizontal, I can't see another thing for the glory of God again. Psalms 88 says so. They that go down into the pit can't glorify you. So give me a chance to tell you, Jesus, I love you. I love you. And to those folks, my friends out there, just control. George Frederick has a big mouth. Eh? Um, my text today is 2 Corinthians chapter 6. It's one that you know very well, so we'll work it together. Father, may the entrance of your word bring light and bring understanding to the simple. May you open our hearts, oh God, not just our intellect. This is not just an intellectual discourse. Open our hearts and let us hear from you. Dear God and our Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, as you speak to us. And all the people together say, Amen and Amen. Yes, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And of course, it talks about we then as workers together. Let me just run it through quickly because um, it says, We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love and faith, by the word of God, by the power, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the, the arm of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers yet true, as unknown yet well known, as dying and behold, we live as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing all things. If it wasn't St. Vincent, I'd say, whoa, yo, yo, yeah. <laughs> but then Grenada, so I'm going to say, what? What am going to say? Tell me. 
Oh, you don't know what to say? Find that which where the heart expresses. This word is far too precious. I want to walk with you and work with you because what I am seeing here today, I, I was here last week, of course, in the latter part of the conference. My wife and I had a little drama getting here, airline-wise and other things, but we were here. We had excellent food to eat. Thank you, Sister Yodina. I know you would have organized all those things. You're on your team. And let me say something because I don't give people flattering words. I have a responsibility, Brother Courtney. One of these days, I have to stand before God and give an account to every word come out of my mouth. So I don't indulge in flattery. What I say, that's what I mean. And if I don't mean it, then I ain't going to say it. And I'm, but I want to thank God. You see, I was with you in some of your struggles and to watch this beautiful building. But brethren, I know it costs plenty money and plenty work and plenty dedication and plenty commitment. And this is why those of you who are probably picking us up through the highways, I want you to understand we are engaged in serious business. I do not see myself. You see, when that little fellow was beating a drum, he disappeared too. Oh, he looks so cute there. <laughs> yeah? But when I was like him, they used to push in our head little thing like Lone Rangers, you know? Lone Rangers. That, and given the concept that, listen, once you can sling two guns at your side and put on a felt hat and get on a Horse, <laughs> you can master the world. It was a false concept. Because brethren, do me a favor. We are workers together. But I want to take you back. Let me see if you can go back to this. There was a time when there was absolutely nothing. I don't know if you could, you could think of that time. Try and see. Close your eyes tight and see. See if you could see absolute nothing. I know your mind won't be able to reach there. But there was a time when there was absolutely nothing. And the Hebrew word says, Ex neelio, out of this nothing, God spoke the word. And when he spoke the word, things began to happen. Look, space was occupied. The heavens were filled with stars like glorious chandeliers all over. Things had happened. The earth came into existence. Water started teeming all over the place. Listen, this God is magnificent. By the word of his mouth, he spoke and he stood fast. You know what the Bible says also? He, he sustains all things by the word of his power. Let me tell you something. A magician will say alakazan and make things appear and create illusions, but they will fade away. When God spoke, the thing stood fast. Let there be and there was. Listen, it's amazing when we pause to understand this God, how he just created all things and all things are designed for your glory and all things are for your honor. Forgive us where we felt we should start to pamper set and show ourselves. Oh God, there is nothing about us that should take any glory that belongs to you. You deserve the glory. And the worship leaders did it well this morning. Thank you. Listen. But from that time when he single-handedly did all these things, he realized, okay, this is time for us to start shifting gears. He didn't want to walk alone. So he could now bring in the introduction. All right? Here is what happened. 
This God who spoke and did what he did, he changed his method of operation and he wants to work with us. Now begin to think. Add some value to yourself. God wants to work with us. And let me lay the theological groundwork where it is. First of all, all right? Let's go to the first one. He did it singularly, but go to, go, go, so go ahead. Work with us. Um, he did it with, in whom? Adam, right? He said, and let me read that. Let's, let's do that scripture. In Genesis chapter 2. He said it was not. Read it for us if you can read it. And the Lord God said it is not good that what? Man should be alone. He, God, who made man. And anything God does is wonderful, perfect, total. But he said it's not good that man should be alone. What I will do for him? I make a help meet. God, the God of the universe, understands that I have certain things in my faculty that function in a way that needs the cooperative effort of other side of me to bring balance into this equation. God knows what he's about. He's working his splendor out. So have no fear. He said it was not good for man to be alone. So he made man a helper. Help to do what? Not just sit down and watch. And not just to criticize, but to help get things done. I want you to understand the context of the worker. But let's lay the foundation. God is the one who said, hey, Adrian, you've got some great ideas. But in order for them to materialize, in order for them to be fulfilled, you need people to work along with you. Do I have an amen there? We need workers. I am here delivering this message, and as a communicator, I understand the value of what is happening, even with those behind the scenes down there. Because 10% of what I say is what you remember. 90% of what I say go through one air, shrink, and gone through the other one. In and out the dusty window. But you'll remember 50% of what you see. So there are those who help me put it in PowerPoint form. So what I say, all right? So what you hear and what you see will last a little longer. And that is why God said we need to understand. We have to work in tandem. I know sometimes we feel that we can do it alone. Let's take a second situation. All right? From the same Genesis, God went to work. And what he did this time? He inferred it in Noah. And we don't, we don't have to go to the text, but you understand it. God told Noah, I'm, look, I'm going to wipe man from off the earth. But you build an ark. So much cubits high, so much cubits wide, so much cubits long. Construct this, put this there, fix that there. God was working in tandem with man. He could have just simply spoke the ark into existence as he did with the creation. You understand? But he didn't do that. He gave Noah the instruction how to build the ark, how to design it, because you're going to put animals in it. And the animals are going to have to stay there for several weeks and months while the waters cover the earth. So he, he worked with Noah, giving him the instructions. Give, go to the third one. 
Okay, on this occasion, move along with us, folks. The third one, he clearly stated it in Abraham. And I want you to check that. Abraham chapter, I'm not Abraham, Abraham <laughs> Genesis <laughs> chapter 18 and verse 17. He said, when God was about to establish the nations of the earth, and when he's going to deal with them in certain manners, this is what the sovereign Lord of the universe says. Can I do this thing and not tell Abraham? When God felt obligated to tell Abraham what he was going to do, he didn't want to do it without the knowledge of Abraham. God wants to work in tandem with his creation. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham the thing which, that which I do? Which implies no. But let's look at the fourth one. And then we'll get the ground of this. All right? In the fourth one. Picture the situation that was created. During the time he gave the prophet Ezekiel a clear picture. Ezekiel saw the princes were doing things against the people. And the princes, now I'm very sensitive here. This is politi politics time in Grenada. And I have no political agenda, I have no fear. But the polit the, the, in Ezekiel chapter 22, the princes there implies the leaders of the land, the politicians. They were doing strange things. The prophets were daubing their behavior with what the King James calls untempered mortar. Meaning they were doing things, they, they, they were whitewashing the people's wrongdoing. The priest, on the other hand, stood and were teaching no difference between what was holy and what was profane. So it was like a, like a Kalalu religion. In the midst of all that, the people started exercising robbery against one another and exploiting each other. God said, listen, enough of that. He's going to put an end to the behavior. But listen to this key verse. And I want you to keep in mind, Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30. God said, I search for a man who would make up the hedge. I sought for a man, okay? among them that should make up the hedge. I want you to get the picture of it. Judgment is about to be unre un unleashed. And God is looking for someone who will come between him and the people and block. Listen, I know I'm, I'm a dramatist. Forgive me, but I want you to get the picture. To block that judgment from hitting those people. God said, I sought for a man. And man there is in the generic sense. Somebody who's qualified. Man, woman. Who's qualified to stand in that gap. And let me illustrate. By a picture. Of how that happened. There's a time when in Israel was walking. In Vinci. They say Kamakiri. You hear me? They were walking Kamakiri. Violating God's law. Listen, they, they, listen they, they, were, they were abusing Moses and, and listen, doing all kinds of things. God was patient with them. Then one time he said, okay, Moses, <laughs> move. Let me wipe these people from the face of the earth and create a name and, you, and, and, and raise you. Move, Moses. I want you to get the picture. Take it in its sacred ground. Moses stood between God and the people. And let me illustrate this as though he's saying, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I don't hear too well in this air, so talking this one. What is it? You're going to wipe the people off? And when you wipe them off, what am I going to do with your great name? Folks, keep this in mind. That's why God is searching for a man who would stand in the gap. And say, no way. Why do you think 
Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17 says, those who are leaders, listen, work with them. Why? Because in working with them, they are the ones who are holding up for you. This, I know, I know we're in a big auditorium and, and I know we look scattered and sparse, but believe you me, I trust your heart is being touched. Because in the midst of all this, God was the one who said he wants someone to come between him and the people. Oh, I look at the picture. That's why you're important. That's why I'm important. And so, here is where we understand from the text. All right? If you're going to, if you're a worker, and keep in mind, a worker, not one who just simply slamming around and looking, casting remarks and making opinions and all kind of thing. I'm talking about one who is part and parcel of what happened. You've got to first understand that we must walk. In agreement. A worker must walk in agreement. Can two walk together except they agree? We need people. Do me a favor. We're not saying that we're rubber stamps and we will agree to everything somebody says or does. No. But the reality is we have this in order. Listen, we need people who could buy into the vision, be part of what God is doing. And run with it. Listen. It's for us to say as in the name. Of the, the, look, this is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. Nehemiah said, you all, Sambala, Tobiah, you could talk as much as you want. We are doing a great work. And we will not what? We ain't coming down. We need people who will stand despite whatever it is. Let's walk in agreement. That's, that, that's the kind of work, you see, if not, do me a favor. Let me give you a little statistics. The working environment generally is a very stressful environment. Eh? It's a stressful environment. It's an environment that manufactures stress. And if I were doing a customer service presentation eh? and to explain to you what happens with people, why, when in the workplace, when one employee, talented, gifted, trained, and qualified, with another employee, talented, gifted, trained, and qualified, when they merge their talents and giftings, it is called an additive effect. They add value. But hear me, sometimes the talented, gifted person can't stand the best bone in the next talented, the gifted one. So instead of having added value, there's an antagonistic environment. And so people come to work and the chemistry they, 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 they give off. It's not healthy. And imagine you have to spend seven, eight, or nine hours in an environment that is toxic. No wonder some of us come along with all kind of thing. Working needs a sense of agreement. Look, we are together in this, but I want to hand over to your pastor just now, so quickly. After work in agreement, we must walk. Work orderly. That's, a, that's the, the other point. Work, walk orderly. Don't just anybody do anything and any put for a storm. Work orderly. God does things decently and in order. Now we are different people with different personalities and different giftings. But listen, once we connect to that singularity of purpose, we're in agreement, then we walk orderly. We're walking together. Listen, time is of the essence. Apart from walking orderly, let's Work with risk. Well, I mean, give us the third one there, was it? 
reasonably. Isaiah 1 and 18. <laughs> no, they say us men are colorblind. All right? So all the ladies say. <laughs> so sometimes gentle, sir? I have to watch to see what I put on because my wife always joking me. Oh, that ain't matching with this. So say, well, I, I, what matching is my concern? I want to make sure that what I am going to deliver is properly delivered. <laughs> so sometimes we have a little basa basa, you know. Really. But whoever worked with this color scheme in this place, I have to confess, has taste. Seriously. I might have put some funny colored chairs that may not fit the acoustics of the building. But here now, here is working together. And Sister Yudin, in your opening statement, you indicated you, you congratulated the ladies who worked so much. Man, work reasonably. Listen, when you have to cook for all these hundreds of people as you did last week, some people like to cook soft macaroni. Others like to still see the, the pieces stick up. Some people like plenty cheese. Others are saying, oh, no, cheese, too much. Listen, work reasonably. Some, if you give them, they will make the thing like salt, Peter. Others, they put no salt, none at all. Let me stop there. But we have to work reasonably. And God said it. God said, come. Let's reason together. I, I mean, I'm amazed that God used that term in that context. Do your sins be a scarlet? Reason? Listen, Lord, my hand move with everything. Clean me. Wash me. Cleanse me. God said, do your sins be a scarlet? They should be as white as snow. Do this red as crimson, they shave this wool. He says, come, let me reason. Working together, something, it involves working reasonably. There's some people who have no respect to time. And I don't want to be one of them this morning. So I don't want to make myself go to long pants. But you give them a half an hour, and they run with about 90 minutes. You give some people up to pray for the offering and they're going to put, put in and, and um, Ukraine and all kind of thing. Like Work reasonably. Brethren, we are together on this. You see, when that synergy comes together, things work well. We are workers. Work also knowledgeably. We got to make sure. And I want to take a special thing at this. When I say don't work naively, let me pull a scripture. It's there. And you can check it. In John chapter 12. And this was Jesus speaking here. All right? John chapter 12. Yes, this is, and, he, and here, here is it, the verse. Then he said, not that he cared. This was Judas who was feeling that the, what the, the bottle of the expensive perfume was too much. This woman waste all this thing. I mean, we could have sell that and give it to the poor. He didn't have the poor in mind. The man was a thief. You hear me? He didn't have the poor in mind. He had the bag and bear what was put in them. So no doubt he probably ever saw of more dipped his hand into the bag. But go to John chapter 13 also. All right? And when they were at the table eating, and he said, one of them is going to betray him, and they start asking, is it me, is it me? Jesus said, is the one who did what? Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop. Now, a sop is a very, to us, it's an, it's a strange, because it's like taking a piece of boss up shot, dip it in some nice curry, you know, and put it, can you imagine somebody taking a piece of boss up shot 
and put it in my mouth. <coughs> it looked funny, but that was the culture. You take, you dip into the sup. It's an indication of friendship. Jesus is giving Judas the last chance to let him know, listen, I want to be a friend. But Judas, he said, listen, Jesus answered, it is he to whom I give a sup. And when I have dipped, when I have dipped it, and when he had dipped it, the, the, the sup, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Just go to the next verse. And after the sup, what happened? Jesus help us. Satan entered him. Then Jesus said unto him, that thou doest too quickly. Now, let me tell you the, story, the rest of the story. Judas pick up and he gone with speed. He gone to look for 30 pieces of silver. The disciples are thinking, oh, we're probably going to buy something to eat. The disciples were with, there with Judas and they did not no, they couldn't discern that Judas was a thief. The three years that Jesus had picked these people, you mean a, a man thiefing among you and you not just stealing something now and then, but thiefing hands down. Eh? And you don't know? When you're working with people, do me a favor. I'm not saying you must become judge and juror now. All right? Because it's what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. But if people start giving off certain vibrations, work intelligently, work knowledgeably. Do they have the interest in heart? Do are they concerned? We are workers together. And this is a working message. It's not one that you're gonna shout down hallelujah, but you are we are working together. Work also effectively. Uh, so, go to the next one. And when we say work effectively, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 16 gives us the metaphor that we are like the church of Jesus Christ is like we are joints put. We are together. Ligaments, sinews, tissues. Everything being attached, one supporting the other. Yes. The phalanges and, of course, the capillus and metacapillus, all these bones, they are supporting one another, making my hands being able and efficient to pick up these lovely flowers. God has designed the body in a way that it can work, all right? Effectively, what my feet can do, my hands cannot. What my eyes can do, my ears cannot. What my mouth can do, my nose cannot. But when they are coordinated, one intelligent job is being done. Work effectively. We are working together. All right? One person may lack what another person is blessed with. And this is why I say again, I think I said it here before. This is why I do not feel intimidated by any person with whatever their giftings and talents are. Why? Because God has gifted you in ways that I cannot. Fulfill. Ephesians 2 and 10. We then as workers together. Not workers. I'm, I'm quoting the text there. He said, we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which he had before ordained that we should walk in them. God already planned way back when. Things for you to do. And if you renege on your responsibilities and I'm trying to fill in, I'm doing a second class job. I want us to keep that in mind. When God has marked you for a particular task, if anybody else is filling that role, it doesn't matter what they carry before, between or after their names, it's a second class job. The text tells us we we are his workmanship. That's a, 
the, the Greek for that is a fancy word, you know? We are his essays, we are his specialists, we are his work of art, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which he ordained before the foundations of the world. Imagine before the beginning had begun to begin, God planned what George Frederick was supposed to do. When I understand that, that's why whatever I'm doing with God's help, I want to do it with excellence. Whatever it must have value, must have worth. If you ask me to do something and I cannot do it, it's not my air of specialty, I would let you know. If you want me to help you, I will help, but let you know. But whatever has been assigned to me, I must do it with excellence. And when you have people of that thinking coming together, it's a dynamism. Work effectively. Ephesians 4.16. And then work respectively. We must respect each other. God has given us various talents. There were places that Peter knew that he could not have gone where Paul went. And there was anointing that probably Peter had that Paul maybe didn't possess that. There were times when Peter's ministry was so overwhelmed that the very shadow of Peter was bringing healing. God is working so mightily in that man. Yet, there are revelations that God downloaded in Paul that Peter had to say, listen, Paul has spoken things. They are hard to be understood. Hard to be understood. He said the ignorant and the unlearned wrestle with them to their own destruction. Some people try to interpret and unravel the things, the deep things that he was explaining. Peter was commending Paul on that. Vice versa, however, Paul, Peter was himself walking in an anointing that perhaps Paul did not have. Could you talk about, I'm standing here, see my shadow from the, all these fancy lights you have inside there. Eh? Can you imagine my shadow passing on somebody and brings them healing? Well, I haven't had that anointing, Dr. Lewis. I haven't had that anointing yet. I mean, I would wish. But I respect what God is doing in you. So when the prophets speak, I listen to what the prophets say. But I must listen also with a discerning heart to make sure they're not speaking in their own spirit. Respect each other. We have, an, we have arrived at an age, I don't know what is wrong with some of us. Some people have a they assume the name apostle. I'm not trying to be funny or facetious. But somehow, they feel that they're better than everybody else. Some have been endowed with a prophetic word. And because they could speak prophetically, nobody else is important. Why these spirits have entered into God's kingdom? We are all workers, what? Together. And the last part says, work supportively. Well, you will understand that. And you must be glad I done it. <laughs> work supportively. So, listen, support what God is doing. When I know what our brother Adrian had in his hands and they kind of cost this place out. Look, sometimes I say, Lord, I, I wish I was a multimillionaire or billionaire. Let me just send it down and say, Adrian, boy. Here's it. But I know, I know. When I think of my dear beloved brother John Lewis, he walking down here and sometimes through tough times, rough times. Times when sometimes he needs cooperation, he's not getting it. But as I close this text, let me close it with what it said. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Because. Oh, 
right? I'll go to the next Psalm slide. This text has information that we have not exhausted. The list is not complete. Of course, the list we said is not exhausted, for there are other clear commands that tell us we should also walk and walk together. In walk in love. Walk in light. Walk in truth. All these are areas of characteristics that we should find ourselves. And here is, he puts a lot of bys and ins and as. And here's what he says, 11 of them. Giving no offense in anything. This is verse 3. All right? That the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in affliction, in the necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings. Then he moved from the, from, from, from the proposition of the in and went to the by. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the arm of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report. Then he moved from the, from the ins and the bys and then he moved to the as. He says in this verse of verse 8, as deceivers yet true, as unknown yet well known, as dying yet behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. O oh, ye Corinthians, our mouth is open towards you. O oh, ye members of Gateway, my heart is enlarged for you. I want God's blessing to be upon your life. And I want God to bless this assembly, bless its leadership, bless those who are there are people who are working hard. And sometimes it seems as though, as somebody said, we the, we the willing, led by the unknowing, are doing the impossible for the ungrateful. We've done so much with so little for so long that we're qualified to do anything with nothing. No, God doesn't want that. God, Hebrews 6 and 10 tells us, he's not unfaithful to forget your works of love. Folks, let's work together. Whatever gift you have, put it in, invest it. Whatever talents you possess, bring it on the table. When we do that, we create a synergy. If, and here's it. If one chases a thousand, yeah? What will two do? Oh, 10,000 to fly. But that is, that is synergistic reasoning. Because logically, if one chase a thousand, two should chase two thousand, no, sir. But when we bring our efforts and our giftings, do my favor. It's too late to show self. It is too late for pampas setting. It is too late for us to think that we are. Do my favor. Time is, is too late for us. Folks, let us do what God has called us to do. And let us all be ready when he calls. He's able to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We adore you. We appreciate you. We give you all that is due unto you. All. And right now, Lord God, we just place all things into your hands. We are workers together with you. Thank you. And dear God, thank you for the bishop in this house and his dear wife. Bless them, we pray, and the work that they have. Don't bother to sit right there. 